Hello everyone and welcome back to Deersey and to part two of my water tower build. Before I go on with part two I've had a couple of questions asking me what the tool was that I used to rub down the edges of the card. It's actually an agate burnishing tool. Um, this is an agate, it's just a bit of hard polished stone I guess and when you cut card with a sharp blade it will make a clean cut but it can raise the edge slightly and this is just to rub over the edges. It's, n it's nothing special, I think they're fairly cheap. I've had this one years. Um, if not you can use any hard smooth object, back of a spoon or something like that. This is the assembled tank part of the Dapple water tower. It's fairly straightforward, I've glued it all together. Um, I've got to put a little inspection hatch there but there's some detailing I want to do and some alterations I want to make before I do that. Firstly there's a certain crudeness in the, the uh, handrails themselves, they're way too thick and therefore the holes are much too big. So I'm going to fill these holes with some uh, tapered sprue and then re-drill them for um, handrails made of brass wire and the ladders look a little, I've, sa I've sanded them down, filed them down a little thinner but the rungs seem far too far apart so they're a bit crude, if I have to use them I will. What I would prefer to do is replace them with a decent ladder and, and somehow arrange to fit them on the side here. With this tool I'm going to re-scribe <coughs> the panel lines um, on the water tank. This tool is an Olfa, O-L-F-A, P-Cutter 450. It's probably more familiar to plastic models than railway models, but it's used to um, carve out slots or gouge uh, recesses in uh, plastic. And you do it by dragging this hooked blade across the surface. So you work it against a ruler rather like that, and it gouges out a channel. Older kits were produced with raised panel lines. The more modern trend is for recessed panel lines. And that's what I want on this, um, on this water tank. So I'm going to use the raised panel lines as a guide and recut them as little channels. Right, I'm just cutting some, rescribing some of the panel lines. I don't know whether in the camera you can see the grooves, but oh, got it. Oops, moved it again. Yes, I don't know whether you can see those in the camera, um, but they are. They, they will be much more noticeable when the painting and the weathering goes on. The panel lines are now cut and I think they show up reasonably well in this image. What I'm going to do now is using some um, 800 uh, grit wet and dry paper is just lightly sand off any of the ra old raised panel lines so that it just helps the finish if that's smooth. I will also do some stretched sprue to fill in those holes. This is a little uh, bit of sprue left over from the uh, kit, so it's the same plastic and the same colour. I'm sure you've seen this before, but it's just a question of getting it soft and bendy. I 
Okay, I don't know whether you can see that, but there's a tapered bit there. Now hopefully that taper will form a plug that I can put into the, um, into the oversized holes. So this finishes the, uh, the hole filling. You can see the little um, conical shaped plugs of uh, sprue have now been glued into the holes. When that is completely dry, they can be cut flush and sanded again. In the post this morning I received a set of industrial ladders from Scale Model Scenery Limited. They're laser cut on webs and there are eight ladders in the pack. I'll cut one from the web and we have a closer look at what they are like. At first sight they look very good. If I compare them with the original kit ones they're actually a little bit wider but the rungs are closer together and Overall, that has to be curved round because that's the handrail. They're about the same. They'll make up to about the same length because that needs overlapping with that. So they should fit perfectly. The ladders are made of quite a flexible plastic, and the instructions simply say, "Bend the handrails round and attach them to the platform." I was a bit doubtful about this, but it actually works. They bend round without cracking or breaking and just clip together in the platform as you see them there. They're not held together with glue but I will put a few spots of super glue just to secure them. The super glue worked fine. I fixed uh, three of the little brackets uh, to the ladder with super glue and when that's dried I use this little bracket as a guide for drilling holes in the tank and marking the walls of the water tank a water tower uh, so that the legs of the brackets will fit in. I drilled them on the tank with uh, a 1.2 millimeter drill, seemed about right, and um, this is just held in place uh, in, the, in the holes that I drilled. Finally I fitted a, a new inspection hatch and cover from a thinner plastic card than the original one. That's dry, so now we're um, ready for paint. There's a technique in model kit making when you come to painting it called pre-shading. And it's to putting a contrast tone underneath what would eventually be the final coats. I'm just going to use um, uh, a flat black, a matte black, and I'm going to airbrush this. I'll try and do it here so that you can see. But I'm going to just finely airbrush along around the edges of the panels. Okay, back down the centre where the different panels are. black doesn't take long to dry. These are Tamiya acrylic paints and they're alcohol based which evaporates quite quickly. So I've given it about 10-15 minutes and then I'm going to spray over the uh, light grey. This has been well thinned. You can buy special thinners but I just use isopropyl alcohol which um, is fairly easy to get off eBay, it's not expensive and it's like an industrial alcohol which is great for thinning paint. And as the layer goes on, don't know if you can see, it's toning down that black is becoming softer. So I'll let that dry off for a while and I'll come round and do 
uh, the sides. Let's start with this side. It's a bit awkward holding it like this, but I'll do a little bit so you can get the idea. So it's just softening. Don't put it on too thick. Um, I think I'll just leave it there. Just do one more wall and then I'll let it dry. I shall now spray on some life colour uh, dark rust, particularly around the, the water hatch here. Before I finish this airbrushing, I'm going to run some black uh, back through the airbrush and just weather the base of uh, uh, this tower. I'm just going to cover the windows a little bit and I'm just going to darken the end of the tower because the it's in the coal yard this is and it's going to get a little bit of weathering around the base. And I'm just going to shadow it down where the ladder's going. Probably traps dirt behind there. It's difficult to clean. So I'll do that. With the acrylic airbrushing now dry, I'm going to give the model uh, a couple of coats <coughs> of clear acrylic varnish. I left the airbrush work overnight to fully dry. All the airbrushing was done with acrylic paints and now I'm going to apply some wash using washes using thinned oil paints. I know you can buy washes, but I like to make my own. These two are simply um, artists' oil colour. The students' ranges of oil colour are quite inexpensive. It's a raw umber and a lamp black. And they're just diluted with white spirit, so they're very thin. I forgot to mention when I was uh, using the acrylic varnish yesterday, but I, I use a gloss varnish. It's easier to control the washes and, and rub them back. Uh, it doesn't grip too, too firmly on the surface of the paint and become difficult to control. So here we go. I'll start applying these washes, um, starting with the black. I'll put it all over and you'll see the effect uh, shortly. It looks a bit, a bit worrying at this stage. Let's put a bit of umber wash in there as well, just to vary, vary the look. When all four sides are done, 
I'll just let it dry uh, for an hour or two. So I'll come back to it. A couple of hours is now passed. Now it's ready for the second uh, part of this uh, uh, of this wash technique. Um, the dried paint now needs to be gently wiped back with uh, tissue, kitchen roll, uh, with a small amount of white spirit on it. This doesn't want to be wet. Okay, so what I tend to do is just to then dab it off so there's a minimum amount. You don't want this to wipe everything completely off. Uh, with just light touches running where the weathering down the slope, let's say in the case of the roof goes, is just to gently wipe the weathering back. Okay, so that's removed quite a bit. And just lightly with no, with a dry tissue here, just remove it and you'll get sort of streaking. But the nice thing is, I hope you can see, is that the black stays within those engraved panel lines, which gives them a much crisper feeling of detail. So you wipe off as much of this as you feel is appropriate. You know? We can keep it quite dirty. Or we can do our best to clean it up, but leaving these nice areas of pockets of dirt where dirt is going to be trapped. So we leave that and just work our way around the model. I'll come back to that. Again, just run that down and let the let the tissue find where it will, which will automatically leave a deposit of dirt in all the crevices that the tissue can't reach. Just with a dry one, just to wipe it down. Now the thing with this is that the original acrylic paint won't come off, but the oil paint will come off with white spirit. So it'll just knock it back to the protected, the varnish layer protection of the acrylic airbrushing is still underneath. And the effect's starting to look quite good. So I'll work away on this just with the tissue and the uh, white spirit and then we'll have a look at it later. The weathering is looking very effective. I do like the way the dark um, dirt, as it were, gets trapped between the panel lines. The rescribing of the panel lines greatly um, enhances this effect. Directly under the, um, the now dirted tower, the brickwork looks a little unnaturally bright, so I'm going to have to just weather that, and I might do that with some weathering powders, although I could airbrush it. Here, using some Humbrol smoke weathering powder, I'm just going to darken down the uh, brickwork uh, underneath the tank. I've got the, um, the base turned upside down, so this is the underside of the roof. a lot better. Another day has passed and the weathering stages are um, just about finished I think. Uh, you'll notice I've uh, fitted the ladder and that's been weathered as well with the same black washes. Now it's all dry I'm going to apply some um, Humbrol enamel matte varnish uh, by, with an aerosol spray and this will just uh, knock back the uh, slight sheen that still remains uh, on the model from the gloss varnish. The 
Right, we're very nearly there now. Um, the two units aren't actually fixed together yet, um, but I have uh, put on the little light. The uh, wires are coiled up inside. Now the only thing is there's quite a gap between the bottom of the ladder and the baseboard. Um, also because I want access to the point motor I'm not going to uh, fix this permanent to the baseboard so I'm going to make a sort of a socket come walkway uh, that will hide the baseboard join where the model meets it and also it will help close down that gap. So I have raided my spares box for a few bits of card and I've got some of the 2mm board here and I'm going to just draw around the base of this I'll draw all the way around and then I'll cut that out and when I've done that I could either paint this um, the grey colour or I can use some of these old scraps from Metcalf kits. That's a sort of uh, just a grey sort of tarmac -y type finish and that's actually roof slates but I thought that might look quite nice. There's a little bit of cobbling around there. The water tower is located at the end of a coal yard so um, the, the ground area here is quite dark. The um, Metcalf uh, detailing is a little bright so I'm just going to airbrush some uh, matte black over the um, over the card detail to just tone it down a bit. Yeah, that looks much more subtle. Okay, finally this two-part build is finished. Uh, everything is glued in place and weathered and fits in quite nicely with the layout. Thanks for watching. I do hope you like this video. I have some more interesting exciting videos in the pipeline. So if you have enjoyed this, uh, please subscribe and like. Thank you very much indeed.